I hope you remember to turn my microphone on this time. Yes, I have. <laughs> wow. That was something quite special that we have just experienced. We experience that when the Holy Spirit comes, when the Holy Spirit is present. As we were praying before the service, I could just hear the flames, just a very slight ripple. And there was a sense, actually, that's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was just rippling through the congregation. There is something beautiful about speaking our native tongue in praise to God. There is something that just brings joy to the soul, that we are so diverse, yet we worship the same God. We have come from all parts of the world, yet we come to worship the one God. And using different languages just adds to that wonder and amazement of who God is. There is a wonderful YouTube video of the song, How Great Is Our God, and it's called The World Edition. Every time I, I listen to it, it brings tears to my eyes. As it starts in English, it moves to another language, and then another language, and then more languages just coming together and making a joyful sound to God in their own language. Some heavenly languages, some earthly languages. It made me think, I wonder, I wonder, is that what that Pente first Pentecost, well, the Pentecost, was that what it was like when the Holy Spirit came and divided as tongues of fire on the disciples' heads to fill them up, to empower them, to give them courage to go out and preach the good news to the world? We know, 10 days ago when we celebrated Ascension Day, Jesus said, power will come upon you and you will preach the good news to all ends of the earth. Ten days later, today, 50 days since we celebrated Jesus bursting from the tomb, the Holy Spirit comes and lands on the disciples and people come to know the Lord Jesus and we see growth in the church. Indeed, if we'd have carried on in Acts 2, 3,000 come to know the Lord that day. We carry on through Acts. We see the wonderful things that the disciples do in the name of Jesus with the Holy Spirit empowering them and equipping them. They speak with confidence. They speak with courage. They go to places they never thought they would go. That, friends, is not a story just for this book. That is not a story just to read in the Acts of the Apostles. That is the start of the story of the church, and we are continuing that very story. That is what the church is about. Preaching the good news to the hurting, to the lost, to the lonely, to the oppressed. It's breaking chains of addiction. It is bringing light and love into people's lives by the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. We can't do it on our own. We can't talk to somebody and bring them to know the Lord Jesus without the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. That's why today is such a celebration. Because not only is it the coming of the Holy Spirit, it is another example of where a promise that Jesus made is fulfilled. I will send the Spirit, the Comforter, the Paraclete, the Advocate, the Judge, whichever term you want to use. Jesus promises it in the Gospel of John. And here, the Holy Spirit descends. The Holy Spirit comes to give us life to give us joy, to give us courage, to equip us for the task that lies ahead. And that's why these last few weeks we've spent time looking at giving and serving, getting our hearts right, preparing our hearts so that when the Holy Spirit comes, we are ready to go. Because we need to be in the right place ourselves. Otherwise, we can't do the things of 1 Peter 4. We can't speak the very words of God if our heart's not right and we've not got the Holy Spirit. We can't serve with the strength that God provides if our heart isn't right and we haven't got the Holy Spirit. We can't worship in spirit and in truth properly if our hearts aren't right and we're holding something back from God. I've asked this question the last few weeks. And I'm going to ask it again this morning. How is your heart? How is your heart towards God today? 
Are you able to love your enemy? Are you able to do so that difficult task, like pick up the phone and talk to somebody who you've fallen out with? Are you able to go out into the community and speak words of life, speak the words of Jesus to our community? We will be equipped with power from on high to do the same things that the disciples did. Do you want that? Clearly not. Do you want that? <laughs> That's better. We could probably go better still, but you get the point. Pentecost is a celebration. It's traditionally known as the birthday of the church. That is why as a PCC we said we want this to be our gift day. Because it's a, it's a chance to give thanks for all that the church has done throughout the ages. Yes, the church is in an absolute and utter mess. It's chaos. It's not very good. But that's because we as humans have made it into that mess. We've not allowed God to do what he wants to do through his church. We've got all these different rules and regulations. We must do this. We must do that. We have to do it this way. We can't do it that way. It's all man-made. That is why we are in such a mess. You just have to look at the Church of England and weep. It does not work. And yes, Bishop, I'm saying this on YouTube if you're watching. The Church of England does not work. It is broken. It needs fixing. And the only way it can be fixed is the Holy Spirit. It is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit coming and making things right. I said in our prayers this morning, one of the things I prayed was to strip away our religion. Because I am not a religious man. I hate it when people say, oh, well, you're, a, you're religious. No, I'm not. And before you think I've gone mad, it's because I'm a man of faith. I am not a man of religion, but a man of faith. You are my brothers and sisters in faith. God is up to something. God is coming. Are we ready? Those of us who are at Latin Hall, it was a time of preparation. Those of you here, I know you looked at the Holy Spirit as well. We need to be prepared. I shared some statistics last week that Pete Gregg was sharing. That is just one tiny example of what God is doing. God has shown up here. God was here. As we, God is here now. But he was here as we celebrate, as we worshipped in song, as we spoke our own native language in praise to him. God was here. God is here now. God is speaking to you now. And God is speaking to you in a language that you understand. He is probably not going to say to you, David, you need to do this. Sorry to single you out. He is probably going to be speaking to you in the way that will make sure that you take notice. It might be an audible voice. It might be. It might be something that's said from the front. It might be a word that we sing. But God will be speaking to each of us in the way that we will take note. So how's your heart? But also, are your ears open to hear? Because we have to have our ears open to hear from God. I was really... Moved last night. I'm going to embarrass my daughter now, but she's so young and it's okay. She'd been watching Okie Do on CBeebies during the afternoon and got really scared when, a, I think it was it a whale that came to eat a boat or something? A rock monster. Okay, I got it completely wrong. A rock monster. And she got really scared. And as she was settling down to sleep, she's like, Mummy, Daddy, I'm scared. They were like, oh, it's okay. God is here to look after you. And she lay there. God is here. God will keep me safe. Spoken from a nearly three-year-old. We are to have a childlike faith. In that innocence of being able to know that God was there, that God would keep her safe, we try and theologize too much. We say, right, let's interpret this. Well, this must mean this. And then we have arguments with one another because we say this, you say that. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what you say. What matters is what the Spirit is saying through the Word of God. 
And that is another reason why the church has gone so very wrong. Because the church does not listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. The church is listening to culture and going, well, I want to import that into here and then make it fit with me, with my thinking. No, that's not what God wants. That is not what the Holy Spirit wants. We need to have a complete and utter change of attitude, mindset, a heart for the church. Because the church is something that should be celebrated. The church is something that should be beautiful. The church is something that should be reaching out. Because it is God's hands and feet. And yet people look at the church and go, I don't want to be part of that. I want people to look at the church and go, wow, what's going on there? I want to be part of that. That's what I want to do. How do I get in? How, what do I need to do? It's simple. You just need to give your life over to the Lord Jesus. It sounds so easy, doesn't it? So why do we find it so hard to share our faith with those in our community, with our work colleagues, with our family? It's simple. We just need to lead people to know the Lord Jesus. A lot of people are only going to see Jesus through what we do. As there is a quote, I can't remember who it's by, that says, for some people, you, me, will be the only Bible that people read. So does your life reflect what is written in this book? Fully. No qualifications. Yes, it does, but no. Does your life follow what is in this book? Because that is what people will see. And it's when they see this in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we have that answer. When people ask us why we have hope, that we can say, well, it's because we know Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. How? Because the Holy Spirit is dwelling in my heart. When we truly love one another with the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, we can learn to tolerate each other's differences. We can be a community that is noted for its hospitality and its warmth. And I'm not sure we're very good at that at the moment. Shock, horror. We're not very good at tolerating difference. We get argumentative. We shout at one another. We see what happens on a global scale when, when countries go to war. It's not good. Why can we not learn to tolerate each other's differences? Because God has made us all unique. We each bring something to the church for this time. We are not all here by chance. We are here because the Lord has directed us here for this season to do this work. You might be sat there going, but I don't know what that work is. That's fine. I don't know where this is going to end up. It's terrifying, but it's exciting. It needs to be exciting so we get involved, and it needs to be terrifying, because then, as I said to the wardens on Wednesday, and we were talking, we have to be relying on God. If we start doing some mission, and it's dead easy, that's what we want to do. If we do the mission, and it's hard, it's tough, we get abuse thrown at us, we get broken down, we get distracted. No, we don't get distracted. That is God, because we are having to rely on him When all of these things are coming our way, which will be saying, no, you're not to do that. Because the enemy doesn't want it to happen. The enemy does not want God's people to rise up and go out and preach the good news. But it's time, friends, for the church to rise up as the army of Christ. It is time to rise up in the power of the Spirit so that we can go out and make a difference. We can give hope to people. Hope is something that is lost in this world at the moment. You just have to walk around Bushmead and see people walking around utterly, utterly lost. I was in my study the other, way, the other day, and I looked out the window, and I saw this little girl walking with her dad, probably from school. And her dad had this big crate of beer. And he opened one and started drinking it, and just down in one. And I thought, my heart just went out to that little girl. But my heart also went out to that that dad. I assume it was a dad. Because he is looking for something. He is looking for God, but he just doesn't know it yet. So who do you know in your lives, in your spheres of influence, that is looking for God, 
but they just don't know it. It's anyone who does not say Jesus Christ is Lord, which is probably the majority of your circle of influence. Are you going to be the good news and bring hope to those people? When we read in 1 Peter 4, we see a Christian community that is seeking to survive in the face of persecution. We see the importance of a loving Christian community for coping with unbelief and opposition to the gospel. We see prayer for one another, love for one another, hospitality shown to one another, exercising gifts to strengthen one another. That helps to sustain faith and cope with opposition to the gospel. And the effect of those ministries is the praise of God through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Wouldn't you want the church to be called that? That the church is a, a Christian community in the face of persecution, whatever that looks like. Yes, for us, it's probably not a threat on our lives like it is for the majority of our brothers and sisters in, in other nations. But it is the attack of the secular society coming into the church saying, well, we want you to do this. And if you're not going to do it, then we're going to legislate to tell you to do it. Well, the moment the legislators tell us to do it is the moment I'm out. You all know my views. I think my days in the Church of England are numbered. And yes, Bishop, I'm saying that too. Because I don't see the Church of England as being a vehicle for God to move anymore. Unless it is renewed, restored, and refreshed by God through the Holy Spirit. I pray, friends, that that will happen. I pray that, that, that the Church of England will not fail, will not falter. But it's up to God what happens. We are living in challenging times. We need the Holy Spirit to come to empower us to fight against the wave of secularism. This day is Pentecost when we celebrate the Holy Spirit, the power from on high. You've all said you want to speak out into our community. I'm just going to be blunt with you all. That's going to require commitment. That is going to require a commitment of our heart, a commitment of our time, and a commitment of our money. That is why today, Pentecost is our gift day. I'm going to be really blunt. Are you willing to put your money where your mouth is? Are you willing to commit to give to a pot of money that will be used for missional purposes? Are you willing to commit yourself to what God is going to do through that. It's not just about money. Of course it's not. But are you going to commit yourself to see what God is going to do through this church? Because he will do things through this church. And if you are, I encourage you now, just pray and ask God how much he is asking you to give. Remember the widow's might. It's not about, it's not about giving the most. It's about giving sacrificially. It's about the widow's mite, which was made for me after last week, which is now going to live in my pocket to remind me of all times that it's not about how much, it's about being sacrificial. God wants to move in power. We are his people, ready to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So let's be filled with the Spirit today, as the first disciples were, and let's reach out and bring hope and healing to this nation. Amen.